Is Foyer in the studio? Shime or not yet? Uh, he was. He just walked out because he thought you were going to Matt Light. Oh, jeez. I was going to have a reunion <laughs> of sorts. Wow. Between <laughs> Foyer. Too much for him. I guess it was too. I guess it was too yeah. much. He's yeah. always wanted to be an offensive lineman, so there's a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah. These tight ends. They, they, you know, they're kind of yeah. you know, tight ends. Uh, kind of yeah. picky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Vrabel <laughs> kind of started it where the defensive guys wanted to catch passes all of a sudden. Yeah. And then, yeah, I played um, with Vrabel. <laughs> yeah, we know you played. He okay. didn't want to catch passes when um when I was there. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh huh. Um. Aaron Rodgers, Mr. Light, how good does he make that Jets team? I mean, I, you could argue, what was he, 8-9, and nine, didn't make the playoffs? I mean, is he, is, uh, I mean, he, he almost lost to a, a Bailey Zappi-led New England mm-hmm. Patriots team. I mean, uh, does he really make that team that much better? I mean, it, he can't make it any worse from that <laughs> position, right? I mean, look, the, but they have, a, they have a decent roster in a lot of respects, right? They got some guys that, you know, as we used to say, are football playing Jessies and can get it done. So, I mean... I think he can make it better, but I mean, what what is he bringing? Is he bringing the drama to the to the NYC? Right? I mean, like, how much? Tra- I mean, if he could do what he did in Green Bay, where there's like not a person until you get like, you know, like way deep into the heart of that little town, right? I mean, there's no, there's nothing there. When he gets to New York City, I mean, he's going to have a lot of people saying a lot about him. Does yeah. he help the development of Zach Wilson? Does that help Zach at all? I don't know how you help that. Yeah. Well, because I really we, went in, we went into last season and everybody was saying he is unbelievable. Like, wait till you see this guy this mm-hmm. season. And then obviously we saw how things unfolded. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, does Aaron Rodgers' mom have any hot friends? I mean, I, I, <laughs> well, Aaron Rodgers would need to have a relationship with his mom yeah, for, for the friends right. to be around. Yeah. Well, these guys are fragile anymore. I mean, we talk about it a lot, you know, with you guys on this show in the past. But, you know, when you, when you have somebody that exhibits fragility, at the quarterback position, yeah. that's not a good situation. I'm not sure how you remedy that. Yeah, that's like that's like we're gonna coach, we're gonna coach players on how to be tough when they get to the NFL. Like, wait a minute, shouldn't they be a little tough before <laughs> they walk in here? Like, what are we doing? It's a different era, but I think adding a guy like Aaron Rodgers, like it now in the game, and it's a little bit different than when Matt and I started because. You know, the quarterback could be more of a game manager. You run the football, you play defense. But that's not today's game. Today's game, it's like you start with the quarterback. And if you got a guy like Aaron Rodgers who, what, is a three-time MVP, has that talent. Like Matt said, you, you talk about Garrett Wilson in with the, uh, the Jets. They have talent down there. You instantly get a guy who's at that level. I don't care if he had a down there year last year. The same with Russell Wilson. Like, that happens. But... I know where his talent is. You put him there, and that completely changes the way that team looks and the way those guys in that locker room think because now they go, oh, even though he's a little strange, with that guy we can win. I also don't think the, that Buffalo, as Stephen A. Smith just said, has missed their window. I mean, no. The, the, no. <laughs> no. I, uh, so no. The, the, division, the division is a difficult one. Oh, it's really difficult. It, it always has been, right? I mean, if you really think about it. Well, you can always count on two wins when you were playing against the Jets, always. Well, not uh, not early, because I can remember back to the John Abraham era. Yep. Now, now, listen, I'm looking at it from one perspective, right? Like the left side of the line, who's that guy across from me? So I judge things a little differently. But I got to <coughs> tell you. Dwight Freeney. Dwight <laughs> Freeney. Woo, I still have nightmares. John about Abraham that guy. was talented, God. man. John He's Abraham soon. was a, a legit football player. He was with me with the Jets, man. He was and Sean Ellis. Don't forget about Sean, Sean Ellis, Ellis, man. Yeah. Sean Ellis was an angry elf. <laughs> He's a South Pole elf, man. Now what about what about your guy Tom Brady? Does he unretire again and go play for the Dolphins? Hey, look, I'm I'm the idiot that sat here and said, No, nah, man, he's done. Last year the guy's definitely walking away from it. I'm not saying anything about Tom Brady retiring. We he could be retired for five years, come back and win games, right? Yeah. I mean, he's playing really good football. You know, I mean, people judged him for a lot of things last season, and there, there was a little bit of turmoil in there like there is in every locker room. But, you know, look, going back to, you know, Green Bay and, and Aaron Rodgers and what he's going to do in New York, 
You know, the thing I, I would say is that he's going to be able to walk into that locker room, and when they start doing drills and they start practicing, he's going to be able to say, like, hey, you know, to the coaching staff, right? Like, hey, I really like what this guy's doing. Let, let's try to use him in this package, in this situation. And, you know, hey, these guys up front, you know, we need to understand how we can pick up some of these hot site stuff. And, you know, the communication's got to change. So he's going to be able to make decisions. And for a young guy like Zach Wilson, he goes in there and he's trying to learn an offense, trying to get, you know, a little bit of respect from the guys around him. It's hard for him to be able to dictate to terms, right? A lot of them try it, but it's not coming from a position of strength. So in, in that way, I think there's a lot that he's going to bring immediately. Curtis is in Florida, unfortunately not with us, uh, but uh, remotely with us. Curtis, you wanted to ask about the dysfunction in the junction uh, in, uh, in Foxborough, is that correct? Yeah, so I just, it's very odd to me, Matt. The Patriots have always been quiet, not a lot of leaks, and there's been one direction. A great band. I think it's Greg's favorite band. And with the Patriots now, you have Robert Kraft saying through Tom Curran, Mac would be traded over his dead body. And then you have Bill Belichick doing everything he can to not praise Mac Jones. I don't understand why they have allowed this to get to this point. And do you believe that Mac Jones is the future quarterback for Bill Belichick? Um, I mean, I, I, I think I think he's the future as long as he can prove that he's worth being in that. I mean, Bill's been very consistent in his approach with players, right? There, there's really not a lot of gray area, right? And speaking of gray, <laughs> you show up late for a half a second after, you know, a 200-plus yard rushing game, you're gone, right? You're a guy like Lawyer Malloy who was beloved and, 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 and was a, a great player in your system but didn't fit the future needs of the organization. Even a guy like Drew Bledsoe, I mean, I could go on and on and on about players who, you know, in a lot of ways, a Logan Mankins, right? Like one, one, of, the, one of the moves that I thought was, was not at all in line with what he should have done, but he did it and he got away with it and they won a Super Bowl, right? I mean, so it's hard to question, you know, his, his, his overall motives um, and why he would draft like a 13th tight end, you know, one year when we're like, hey, we really need a, a pass rusher, right? Like, but he makes it work. So I, I can't answer the, the, like what Bill sees long term for Mac Jones because, you know, we, we've only got a little bit of history to work with, right? And, and the recent history isn't the kind that you would say builds a lot of confidence. Does it weird you out though when you hear people ask him point blank ask bill point blank is mac jones going to be your quarterback next year and he can't give you an answer he's like mac jones is a quarterback in the nfl that is the weirdest response to a question like that yeah but not not from bill i mean we, <laughs> really i, I was actually he talked about <laughs> yes. cam newton glowingly yeah yeah I, yeah yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i think there are times that that he realizes that certain guys given their you know, just, just kind of who they are, right? That they need certain things. And then there's other guys that I think he knows that he can, he can push in ways that seem foreign to us. I mean, we know the mental gymnastics that he'll put guys through, right? The psychological. Did he do it with you? Oh, man. He <laughs> loved to mess with me. Now, the difference is, right, like, okay, so I've done this before in the past, right? You know, th there are people. And I, and I think, actually, the guy that we're all here for today is one of these kind of guys. It's, strong leaders do this kind of thing where you ask him a question, and I'm going to be a point blank one, right? Hey, Bill, do you want me to – I'll use Belichick as the answer. You, you want me to set the thermostat at 70 or 71? There's not a lot of gray area, right? He could say 70 and a half. No. doesn't happen, I think. No. He'd be like, I mean, you know, look, like, I mean, you know, we can – I mean, we're going we're gonna to set the <laughs> – you know. And I'm like – and then nothing for a long time, right? And you're sitting there going, I mean, what, so, so 70 or – I mean, I was going to set it at 70, Bill, but I, I, may, I could set it at 71. Could, and you get diarrhea in the mouth and you do all this stuff, right? <laughs> He's just he's just yeah. testing you. Yeah. He's 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 going to the boundary and saying, "Can I can I get this guy to? I don't know. I don't know why he does what he does, but he's a genius at it." God damn it, Matt! Do I have to tell you what the temperature needs to be. God damn it! Jesus Christ! Why? God what damn the? it! Oh, listen. He's he's a, he, he's beautiful in that. So look, I think when you look at the questions that are asked to Bill, how he responds to him. It's not as if he hasn't thought of these things. He's walking into every interview understanding, okay, here's the things that people are saying out there. Here's probably what they're going to ask me. If they throw me a curveball, he has the go-tos. And he told us as players, he's like, hey, look, man, if they throw you a question and you don't like it, just tell them to come talk to me. You know what I mean? Yes. How many times did he, did yeah. he say that, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's going, to, he's going to have an answer for those things. So it's not something that 
he's so his doing answer just- his answer with regard specifically with regard to Mac Jones his refusal to say that hey he's our he's our guy is intentional yeah and is it has nothing to do with how he feels about Mac Jones but it has everything to do with something that he thinks he's going to get out of Mac Jones by answering that question in that way oh well, yeah yes and no it, it has to do with Mac Jones for sure. I mean, don't don't get that twisted, right? right? Like, like it has to do with him, but it's not as if the verdict has already been delivered, right? So, you look at if if it was if it was Tom Brady, he's going to say something like, right? Like, look, Tom's been a great player in this system for a long time. You know, Tom brings a lot to the table. We respect what he does. You know, he is our quarterback right now, right? So, with Mac, I think I think the message is, hey, man. This is a, this is a young quarterback. You want me to commit to this guy for long term in perpetuity, basically, and then open myself up to the five million you know <laughs> questions that come out yeah, of that one? If no. it doesn't work out, I'm yeah. going to state the obvious and just say you know that this guy is a player in our system and leave it at that. Right. Right. And, and then the other thing I always I always talk but, about: but, well, do you become? Are you one of Bill's guys? Because he always has like a handful of guys that if you ask him about. You know, he'll go on and on. You ask him you about mean like Rich- they're going to be here today, Slater yeah. and McCoy. Yeah, and- like That's those right. two guys. You ask about Richard Seymour, he might, yeah, it's like pulling two teeth. You ask about Anthony Pleasant, he might go on all day long, yeah. right? So there are always those guys who you like. He just, he just brought in AP, Anthony Pl- I haven't heard that one in a long yeah. time. Yeah. And listen, for all of the Patriot fans out there, the diehards, they know about Anthony Pleasant. Most people wouldn't, but – Wiggy and I can sit here and talk about a guy like that. But I mean, that, that was the heart and soul of the dynasty, right, and what developed what we have now. Those kind of guys don't exist for the most part coming into the National Football League. And that's another point that you have to understand. Bill doesn't have a cast of guys like a Brewski and a Vrabel and an Anthony Pleasant and a Roman Pfeiffer and, right. and a Jermaine Wiggins and, a, you know, all these guys that, that understood that, hey, man, sometimes you just need to sit down, shut up, and get in line. He doesn't have that anymore. So, so like, one of the tools that he has to utilize is the, the surrounding media to a point, right? He's done it. He's always kind of majored in it to a degree. But where else is he getting his help? No, instead he has guys like Kendrick Bourne who are publicly complaining about the offense. <laughs> well, Matt, how would you feel? <laughs> right? And, and we had this conversation. And that's what Curtis is talking about, is oh, that you, don't, you, you would never see that the last 20 years. Well, and, and that's the point we talked about last time. I mean, that's what he has to get back to. He has to get back to a locker room that's controlled, that they understand their place, what they can and can't say, how they can and can't address. I mean, because it does no good, right? I mean, that, that was the overwhelming mm-hmm. thing. Some people li- listen to me say that. They say, like, Man, how are you going to let somebody tell you what you can and can't feel, can and can't express, right? It's a very foreign thing in this world, you know, because we've got a lot of people that have been awakened to this un- unknown reality yes. that, that we, we talk about a lot. But, but the reality is, right, look at it from the other side. What good does that do our organization when you say things like that? And, and again, the default for Bill Belichick is if it's not helping us win games, I don't want it. I actually think giving Mac some – encouragement to in front of the media would help this team though i think that mac and bill's relationship seems from the outside strained and i and you bring up players coming into this league and and a lot of people are saying they're fragile yeah bill giving confidence in mac jones as that is our quarterback next season. I don't will think only Bill help cares him. about yeah, whether Matt Jones yeah, but, but, is and, and, and here's the right. here's the caveat though. You got to earn it. Right. You got to earn it. So so I always I always tell people, man, if I say I love you every time I hang up the phone, does it really mean that I love you or is it just something I say? Is it just lip service, right? If I'm going to go out and I'm going to speak highly about somebody, is it just to say it to make them feel good or have they earned it? And in the game of football, you know, guys can call BS in a locker room if they hear a coach stand up and say something for somebody, but on the flip side, that person is on the sideline ranting and raving about the offensive coordinator, the play calls, and all that kind of stuff, right? If they're doing things that don't embody what that organization represents and then the head coach goes out there and says something swimmingly about them, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Well, it's great to see you. Um, well, what are you I'm, uh, I'm shaving. I'm shaving the head of you, you guys. You're, I am. Uh, Wiggy is Wiggy believes his strength. I'm is like in a Rastafarian right now. I can't uh, shave my. Uh, he's not doing so. You're getting the head shaved. I am. Yeah. Just to be clear. Yeah. yeah Former yeah. New England Patriot offensive lineman, big tough guy. 
No problem getting the head shaved. No, nope. three times Super Bowl champion. I saw a little champion. dude down here that's shaving his head for his brothers. Brothers got this big, beautiful mop of hair. Little dude. Little dude. Eight, ten years old. Eight, something probably like that. eight years old. <laughs> okay, we got Love grown. We got grown women who won't do it. Yeah. Well, but, no, I think I'm going to cut my hair. Oh, are you going to cut your hair? I think I am. Oh, okay. Listen, don't get pressured into this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm. Oh no, wait, the pressure has been um, yeah, full, yeah. full on I all think week. Seven yeah. inches. Yeah. Eight, actually. Eight. Yeah. 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 Um, hey, listen, I would, I would hire somebody yeah. out here. Just let, empower them to do yeah. it for yeah. you. Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm just She's saying. She's already bought it. The press is too much for her. That's like a year and a half of growth. Yeah. Wow. It's taken me so long to grow my hair. But it's for a good cause. And um, <laughs> All right. Yes. All right, Courtney. Greg's, Greg's like Willie right. Mack saying, you getting your hair cut. Right? I know. My, my <laughs> eye is twitching while I'm saying this, just to let everybody know. And listen, right. by the way, what he does is clearly amazing. You guys talk about it. But, but I just wanted to add one little aspect he does it and he's the first guy in here the last guy to leave when you guys talk about rob hale wiggy you were talking about you know he is the, the guy you know that everybody looks up to in this area but the way he does it man is what i love the most and that's yeah. what people need to understand he yeah. literally is the first guy in here last guy to leave every single day he doesn't take the vacations right no. like it, it matters to him no he sits he he's he started this he's built it into a Billion dollar annual revenue company, and he still sits in the cubes and makes sales calls. He and by cold, the way, he's cold calling people all the time. And, and, he, say, and he and his wife, right? It's not. It's not a fun. Their generosity isn't a function of their success as a company. It's what they want to do, yeah. and, and that's a, that's an interesting distinction too. A lot of times, it's just a okay. We're going to give five percent of what we make, right? So the more profitable we are, the more we give, and that's great. That that's a great system, right? But it's it, I think it's exponentially more impressive when it's what they actually do. Yeah, it's what he does, man. Yeah. It's what's important to him. So hats off to him, the entire Granite team. They're incredible people. All right.